Welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public meeting on Monday, October 19th, 2020, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as normal. First, we'll take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. As you hear your name called, please unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then please uh, place yourself back on mute. Uh, Patricia Off. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Jan Marquardt. Present. Jane Scheffler is not present. Petty Startup. Present. And Jane Wald, I'm present. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your raised hand and call upon you to speak. After speaking, please remember to remute yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period for the end of the meeting. Please be aware commissioners need not respond to comments during the general public comment period. If guests wish to make a comment during that time, when called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So welcome all. Okay, and uh, it looks like Jane Scheffler is oh, here. I just what? found 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 her in the attendees, promoted to panelist. You're oh, on you're... mute. Howdy. Hey, Howdy. Jane. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Why can't I tell you guys I'm there? <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> How are the babies, Jane? They're good. They're still in the hospital, but they're doing well. We've got um, our, so we've got Ulysses is now over six pounds. He's like six mm. pounds and two ounces. And Linus, who was two pounds, two ounces when he was born, is now up to three pounds. So wow. still very small. <laughs> but they're growing and they're well. Exactly, yes. And they Terrific. Have okay. hey, I, was, I think I was only three or four pounds when I was born. <laughs> okay, that makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was a triplet. You're you a triplet. triplet? Yeah. How so. can you feel good knowing it was Nate? Yeah. Well, there are three of them. <laughs> right. That's impressive, Nate. Were you the biggest or the smallest? I was fraternal and I was the biggest. So I think I was, um, maybe I was like 4'10 or 4, I don't know. I, I, none, of, we were never, we, none of us were over like four, five pounds. I may have been a little over four and my brothers were like, 310, 311. Wow. Your poor wow. mother. We were three weeks early and we, my mom likes to say we could fit in the palm of her hand. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of my uncles was 14, a 14 pound baby. Whoa. That's on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> we, totally off topic, but you know, um, our, one of the, our town's electrical inspector, she's not but she's actually really petite, but she was like an 11 pound baby. She, I guess she was really tall and big, but you know, she had, she's not at all a tall or big person. <laughs> I'm like, wow, 11 pounds, that's pretty amazing. Well, right, ben, I guess you're trying to keep us on topic. Huh? <laughs> so subtle, <laughs> subtly, I, I enjoy the conversation, but. So Jane, yeah, so um, Jane, yeah, I mean, you know, three, four pounds, that's, that's a good size. Yeah. Ben's just embarrassed because he wasn't anything special when he was born. Oh, I think my <laughs> mom would beg to differ, but. <laughs> First on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there any announcements that anyone has to make? Ben or um, um, not that, nothing that's not already included in the agenda here, so. All right. Um, because we have uh, members of the public present uh, who may have interest in demolition applications and CPA proposals, 
Um, I'm going to move the vote on the DRB and CPA representatives uh, to follow yep. the action on CPA proposals. Um, so let's begin with uh, demolition applications. And these are, uh, this is not a public hearing. So this is a preliminary disposition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think uh, Tom Hartman from was planning to present on 37 Bay Road, and he's not here yet. Um, I don't think. Right. I'm looking in the attendees. Um, and I don't believe anyone from 405 Market Hill Road's coming. Um, so it might yeah. make sense to do the CPA proposals first. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead with the 405 Market Hill Road. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. So um, I need to find that here. So here's their application. Um, it was received uh, early last week um, and it's for the demolition of a kennel, an old building that was previously used as a kennel for boarding dogs. Um, the date of construction was approximately 1960 um, and it's in poor condition. Um, can everyone see this okay in terms of the resolution and the size of the? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, in terms of images, I also made a few maps, but I think the application does a good job too. Here's the aerial view of the structure. Um, it's. Is it that entire? It's that entire structure that the entire U shape. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, this is from from the road, Market Hill Road, um, from the back, seemingly. Can't see much there. I guess the fence as well. Can I just ask, did we not, is this not the same kennel that a couple years ago we approved demolition for? Yes. OK. I, I believe so, yeah. Oh, interesting. I was not aware of that. So maybe that ex ex permit expired or something. So they're coming back. Uh, Nate, are you aware of the history of that? Uh, now that you mentioned it, it sounds familiar, but I, um, you know what, um, what we've been implementing, uh, Rob Moore, the building commissioner, is that, you know, if someone applies for a demolition permit and doesn't act on it, then it expires within six months. And they can always ask to extend it, but he's treating it like a building permit, which expires in you know every six months. So you can you know once it's open or once it's started, it you know you the owner could um, keep it open for a while, but obviously they never followed up with. Yeah, no, it's been a long time, and so it should come back. I just wondered if it was the same one because it looks so familiar. Yeah. yeah. So here it is, location wise, and here um, same thing. Here's, oops. I, I had taken some pictures from the road. And I well. believe there's a there's a house that was a maybe a veterinary office to the south of it. And, and that is excluded from this. Yeah, I mean, part of the reason there's a new application is maybe I think this parcel was like newly subdivided and, and it's a new owner possibly. Um, but yeah, there, there's some, some like agricultural agriculture here. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's next to a vet or not, but um, there is like this uh, other structures around. The, the fact I know most about this is that my dogs and cats have stayed there. <laughs> But, but it hasn't been in operation as a kennel for quite some time. What I'm yeah. Well, maybe we should ask them. They have more sentimental connection than we do. Dane, that puts you in the George Washington slept here category. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the, the George George Washington slept here category. Oh, slept here. <laughs> Dane's the only one who has claim to a history with it. Oh. 
I mean, uh, there, are some, there are some famous American architects who designed dog kennels like Frank Lloyd Wright, but I don't think that's relevant in this situation. But I, I've driven Market Hill Road fairly recently, and I, I actually remember looking at this building and wondering what it was. Um, so all is revealed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, ben, could you go down a couple of photographs to the red siding? Uh, is that um, siding on one of the... That's the fence. So up, up oh, a oh, couple. Sorry. sorry. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the fence. But back about two, there's, we can see some red siding on a building. One more. That's the... That's just the building. Yeah. yeah. Brown. Okay. Um, are there, would any member of the commission like to suggest uh, um, a reason to proceed to a public hearing? Or if not, shall we move in another direction? Seems to me if this is already once approved for demolition and it's years later, that moving in another direction might make sense rather than a hearing. Mm -hmm. I remember being pretty thorough. I remember us going through like the year, the condition, all the pros and cons and having a pretty serious vote, don't you, Jane? I mean, it was, yeah. Um, and so I would tend to figure that we had done our due diligence and I still think that probably it's okay if it comes down. I don't see any strong reason for keeping it. Okay. Um, Robin, Jane, do you have anything to, that you wanna observe about this? Um, I, I, I concur with the prevailing thoughts. Well then, um, uh, for the motion, thoroughness, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, um, I move that we approve the demolition, demolition application um, for, um, oh, it's not 405 anymore, what is it? Um, it is 405. It went from 336 to 405. Okay. For 405 Market Hill Road, um, the kennel building only um, without requiring a public hearing. Thank you. Okay. Second. Thank you, Robin. That's a lovely motion. <laughs> um, is there any further discussion? Hearing mm -hmm. none. Um, uh, all in favor of this motion, let me see if I have to do a roll call. I will have to do a roll call, yeah. Um, Patricia off. In favor. Um, let's see, Robin Fordham. Yes. Okay. Jan Marquardt. Aye. Uh, Jane Scheffler. Aye. Betty Startup? Aye. Jane Wald, aye. Tell me I haven't missed anyone. Okay, great. Uh, that's... that's unanimous. Mm -hmm. okay. Who changed the spelling of my name? Oops. Oops. Ah, uh, Ben, you did that. Uh -huh. I know, I was, I was oopsing because I minimized the PDF. Oh, I thought you uh, changed my name spelling. I don't think so. Somebody did. It wasn't me. Yeah. Maybe it was Zoom. Oh my goodness. They're getting really powerful. <laughs> uh, it, ben, can you tell if uh, Tom Hartman is here? Oh, he is. Yep. Perfect. Then let's go to sh the sheds at 37 Bay Road. And um, it, I, I didn't find an attachment for that, but perhaps Tom will walk us through. Yeah. Happen. Um, hey, Tom, are you there? I am. How you doing? Great. Doing well. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. 
Um, so I just gonna wanted to get this up on my screen um, just to orient everyone. Uh, so 37 Bay Road is kind of that first parcel after the double roundabout on Bay Road. Um, the structures are tucked back uh, from the road um, and the this is a single family home back here. Um, and the structures in question, whoops, are- Don't look like that. Don't look like that. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> the, sh the sheds. Hold on a second. Which... The photos. Yeah, they were the attached photos. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me, why don't I have- But they really are just, you know, they really are just like storage sheds or wood sheds. They're not. Um, I can mm -hmm. tell you if you want. I, you know, I'm not sure if they have your bill, but they're not. Um, you know, they're they're over 50, but they're not much over 50. It's hard to tell based on aerial photographs because the site's pretty wooded. But. Mm -hmm. um, I did yeah. actually take a site visit today, and. Um, they're they're small and they're open and they're not in very good shape but they don't seem to complement or be part of the architecture of the original building they just seem like something constructed one held wood and the other looked like it was just stuff mm -hmm. why did this even come to us well the way the bylaw is written um it uh it's just the way it is. Um, Tom, is there anything you would like to tell us about the? Uh, no, essentially um, the project is to move the offices of the Kestrel Trust into this house. So it triggered a whole permitting review process, including site plan review with the planning board, the demolition delay for the sheds, um, and uh, building permit for change of use. So this was one of the processes we needed to go through. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, is, is the, the house structure, is that an old structure? Yeah, it was built in 1950s. So it's over 50 year old, years old. Okay. Um, and it was uh, the Epsteins, uh, they designed it and lived there their whole lives until Kest they made uh, an arrangement for Kestrel Trust to buy the property. And then there was a conservation easement with the town for the pond. So yeah. the, and, and this is the plan. Okay. Does anyone have questions uh, for Tom Hartman? Is this the one where the driveway, at the end of the driveway, there's the wooden contraption that holds the trash or something right out at the road? I always go. No. It's closer, it's closer to the rotary jam. Yeah, this, this, yeah, this, you, um, probably now with the, when the uh, trees lose their leaves, if you look um, south, south um, east from the rotary, <laughs> you might be able to have a, a, a little peek into the property, but it's really, you know. Hmm. This is the first drive after you go through the rotary. Where the trash bins are is the second drive. Um, yeah. 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 I never even noticed this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's obvious when you turn out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just say it's a very exciting thing that the Kestrel Trust has found this opportunity. And I love what the Kestrel Trust does for our communities. And uh, I'm in favor of the removal of the sheds. I agree. Okay, so Hetty, I'm going to take that as a motion. Go ahead, Jen. Second. Jane, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a second somewhere. Uh, uh, so all in favor, I, I'm sorry, roll call. Um, uh, uh, Pat off? Yes, in favor. Robin Fordham? Uh, in favor. Uh, Dan Marquardt? Aye. Uh, Jane Scheffler? In favor. Hetty Startup? In favor. 
And then Jane Wall in favor. So the in favor of um, uh, permitting demolition. All right, yes. thank you. Hey. Yeah, thanks, Tom, for joining us. Yeah. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye, Tom. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> That was an easy one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to CPA proposals, um, we have uh, representatives from the Mill River, uh, from the District One Neighborhood Association, and from Goodwin Church. Do we? Mm -hmm. Right then. Yep. And then uh, Jeremiah Laplant is here as well from the town uh, for two of our building applications. Okay. Um. And so, yeah, I'll um, uh, invite. Yeah, why don't we take the individual applications first for uh, Mill River yep. and Goodwin Church, and then we'll uh, look at the town projects. Okay, that sounds good. So, so um, I'll invite the Mill River application to speak now. So um, Meg Gage is here from the Mill River or from the District One Neighborhood Association. Promote Meg to panelist. Um, yeah, before Meg then, starts, Ben, I just want to say to the commission, yeah. there might be some new members. You know, typically the historical commission um, hears and reviews the um, CPA proposals for historic preservation and then writes a, a, a memo to the CPA committee with its recommendations or its, its thoughts and comments and also provides Robin, who's our CPA committee rep, um, you know, information to speak to these projects when the CPA kid, committee reviews them. So, um, you know, we may not get to all the projects tonight. We may hear them all. If not, uh, we'll have another meeting where we can um, cover them all. I think there's six or seven historic preservation projects uh, proposed this year. So there's quite a few. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, thanks Nate, yeah. Um, uh, so um, Meg, the uh, members of the Historical Commission uh, received the application for uh, the Mill River project prior to this meeting. Uh, so I wonder if you would um, just this is an opportunity for you to supplement the application or say anything you'd like to about uh, about it. Great, thank you, Jane. Um, and and uh, Meg, Meg, sorry to interrupt. I'm just wondering if there's anyone else from your team. Uh, Janet here. Keller, I think, is on as well. Yes. Janet Keller. I was just going to say that. Yep. Do you see her? Yep. Yay! Hi, Janet. <laughs> Am I audible? Yep. Uh, not, Jan, Janet's muted. I, okay, but I'm not visible, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm audible, but not visible. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're very uh, delighted to have this opportunity to talk with you uh, on the Historical Commission. Uh, the District 1 Neighborhood Association has been in operation for a couple of years, and we have three purposes, and I think I'll very, very briefly describe them. You'll see how this proposal fits. Uh, first is a conduit of information for people living in District 1 to know about the issues and developments that affect District 1 uh, residents and as well as townwide issues of importance. Our second purpose is to advocate for specific changes related to public safety and well-being, neighborhood integrity, and services. So for example, we have a new traffic light in the middle of North Amherst that we lobbied for and uh, got. Uh, we're getting a sidewalk on East Pleasant Street. The North Amherst Library is about to get a, an addition with the, this will be a library actually with a restroom. Uh, and we're, we maintain the gardens at the ends of Summer Street and uh, in the, the median in the middle of North Amherst. And we also work, the third goal is to work, we work to build community in District 1, which is what this history trail is all about. Mm -hmm. um, we on the steering committee of the District 1 Neighborhood Association of Dona have lived in North Amherst a total of 127 years, <laughs> the five of us. Um, and we've uh, walked these trails many, many times and been aware of these cellar holes one of my great regrets uh, was not taking advantage of Steve Puffer's offer to take me on a tour 10 or 15 years ago 
uh, to share what he knows, what he knew. Uh, so, so the people are, we're losing people who know this history and the documents. And uh, we think this is a wonderful project for uh, the town of Amherst, as well as for our neighborhood to uh, bring back to life, so to speak, these uh, locations along the Mill River, several dozen of them apparently, but uh, many of them are gotten, there's no remnants at all, but there are many that have remnants, uh, but to bring them back to life, working with uh, UMass archeologists and uh, Eric Johnson, who's a community archeologist from UMass, who's actually worked on the Emily Dickinson Homestead Project is very interested in working with us and hopefully engaging high school students as well. I guess I'd rather answer questions than repeat what's in the proposal, but um, I can't tell you how enthusiastic we are about it and how much we think it will add to North Amherst to balance some of the commercial development, which is probably good. Um, we, we also want to balance the new and the forward looking with some awareness of the rich uh, and feisty uh, history that is very much part of North Amherst. Maybe I'll see if people have questions. Also, I sent Ben some pictures that I was not skillful enough to put on the proposal, but I'm hoping yeah. I, I, tried, I tried so many different formats. So Oops. this one is a levy. Okay, the, shall I describe each one? This one is sure. a levy that's very near the, uh, the park and it directed water, it raised the water level on the left side and shot it into a canal that went up what is now the north side of the Mill River Recreation Park and then across the, what's now the driveway into the mill store, which, uh, and then it ran the mill by dropping down into the river. Wanted to show the next one. Yeah, it's really hard to see this one. It's way down the little rocks along the river. I'm using my cursor, but you can't see my cursor, right? <laughs> no, no, I can try to. I can try to. Yeah, there you cursor, are. Cursor right. over. Right. Yeah. This, this took some bushwhacking on our part to get down and get these pictures, uh, but you could easily make a little trail at off of the main trail to get to this one. Next one. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, piling that was some along the river. Next, this is a really fabulous uh, uh, cellar hole along the river. And these are tiny little mills. They made pencils, you know, it was tiny, tiny before electricity. Mm -hmm. and each one has a story of some family and there's another something. Wow. These all have a story of a family that, you know, used their entrepreneurial intelligence to put together some little projects, you know, projects. There are people we want to learn about who they were and where their families were, where they lived and so on. So I don't know if you want to go, there's maybe one more. Uh, I think that's it actually. Okay. So tell me if you have questions. Well, I don't have a question. Okay. But, um, Sorry. Okay. Okay. Janet, let me ask Janet Keller, do you want to add anything? No, uh, except that I'm, I'm really thrilled about this, and particularly with the thought of involving both uh, students and um, uh, professionals, uh, logical professionals from the university and then high school students in this project. I think um, it, it will add a dimension that people are not aware of in our end of town. I, I find that a lot of people don't know about um, North Amherst and all the rich history that it has. So I'm very excited about it. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one question. The project title is Creating an Interpretive Hysteric historic trail along the Mill River. And I, I understand and your photos help to clarify the nature of what can be seen there, but how, how once it's, it's a, you know, you've created the interpretations, how is that gonna be disseminated? How are people gonna know? Okay. 
Right. So thanks to, I wish I had my, if I were shown, so I don't know how, um, if you've gone recently to art museums, they don't, you don't always have to get the headphones anymore. You use your little, your cell phone and a QR code mm -hmm. that you scan a pic of thing and you will hear the voice of a high school student telling the story of that site. But we'll also have plaques out uh, like you often see at an archeological dig where they'll have a little, a, a little plaque that says, here's where the school was or you know, the pub was, but we'll have that. But we're also planning to have tapes of hopefully high school students uh, telling these stories uh, based on the research that they've done about who these people were. Mm -hmm. So anyone with a cell phone will be able to get to have access to the uh, information. And with those QR things, you can have sub links to go to other links and to other links to dig deeper into the history with re references and so on. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love the one of the things we're most excited about is getting these high school kids taping their own voices, telling the stories of the research they did. Uh, we're hoping that we might be able to arrange for them to get credit. One of the things that's cool about Amherst High School is you can get, I graduated from Amherst High School with nine college credits back in the 60s. Uh, so we're hoping to work something out where we might have a field school with high school students and undergraduates from UMass where the, UMass, uh, the high school students get credit. Because um, mm -hmm. it's serious, you know, academic work they'd be doing. But this is getting a little bit beyond what we've actually, we can't, we still have to, this is the vision. <laughs> yep. Janet, anything, to, yeah. Any other questions? Or yeah, Janet? I noticed uh, Robin uh, had her hand raised. Uh, Hedy, Hedy Hi there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, can I go ahead? Uh, yeah, um, I have, I just, I wanted to ask three different questions. I'm just going to put the questions out there and then see if they can get answered in order. So am I correct in, um, get, I get the sense that this is a planning grant. This is for the planning, but not the implementation of the walk. Um, the next question I had was sort of um, toward um, Jane. I'm curious how this, um, kind of funding would fit on the CPA grid for historic preservation, what it would fall under, because I know that's something that's come up in CPA before. And then also curious how you came by the estimates for, particularly for the um, project planner, but um, the other estimates for the budget. So the first question is yes, it is a planning grant because we think uh, there's a lot of thinking that needs to go into this. Before, uh, to make sure it works and you know communicating with the various players and uh, uh, the project planner so that's the answer to the first question it's a planning grant uh, in a project like this you this is a multi-year project you can't really do without a good plan uh, the second question you asked I think is not for me to for us to answer is that correct it's more Jane is that for I, I think the second question is more to see how it fits into the Community Preservation Act grid of allowable projects. And correct. Yeah. And, and there is some, uh, I would say that, and I don't know, I'm sorry, I'll, t I'll speak for myself and I, other commissioners can say what they, what, what, their thoughts are about this. My sense is that the Historical Commission has a broader definition of, of preservation or rehabilitation or um, uh, I, I would say, yeah, creation, I'm sorry, preservation, rehabilitation or restoration than the Community Preservation Act Committee does. Um, so we, we would make recommendations about a project to the Community Preservation Act Committee, and they would be the final determiners of uh, a project. Okay, can, I, can I share my screen quickly? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, have, um, I have the Department of Revenue, uh, the allowable chart, if people can see that. Sorry, Jane, to interrupt. So, yeah, I mean, Robin, I think this is interesting, you know, um, you know, it's clearly not acquisition. So here's historic uh, resources here. Um, they say building structure, vessel, real property, document, or artifact listed on the state register of historic places or um, is determined by the local commission to be significant to the history, archaeology, architecture, culture um, of the city or town. So, you know, for usually that would mean that um, the commission would need to just, you know, find that it meets that definition of historic. And then, you know, I agree with Jane that there's, you know, some interpretation of what's preservation and then what's rehabilitation and restoration. And so uh, I think it's always going to be, a, um, you know, some interpretation there. So I, I think the, uh, if the commission thinks it's preservation, you know, um, you know, it's aiding in the protection of uh, property by, uh, you know, it depends on how strictly people interpret or think what that, you know, that means. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, I mean, so far it looks like, um, well, first of all, I don't quite understand where planning grants go under and, and our last round of the CPA, I think there was guidance from the DOR that suggested that they should be part of CPA administrative expenses and not under historic preservation, but I have to look that up again. But it, the, the, the thrust of the proposal seems more educational to me than preservation, and that's what I'm just trying to anticipate issues that might come up at the CPA um, in terms of reading the proposal and saying, well, where is the, where is the preservation? aspect of it. So if you were preserving part of the landscape, that would be more straightforward. But since it's a planning grant, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure how it's going to kind of fit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's probably a line of questioning the committee will ask. So part of what's being preserved is the records and the knowledge and the uh, of the of the history. Anyway, I'm wondering if uh, if planning to preserve um, these things are not um, they're of great importance, and so um, and they have complex histories, um, and I'm I'm wondering what your sense is of I would argue that um, doing this spade work, if you will, is critical to the preservation and perhaps ultimately um, restoration. Um, is that something that you've, you've worked with before? Would, would you care to comment on that? I can make one, one comment about it from my uh, knowledge of the last say 15 years of the Community Preservation Act, uh, how it's been administered in Amherst and quite some time ago, um, a kind of documentation projects or study projects or planning projects were allowed for CPA funding. But I think that, it, it, as the um, composition of the committee changes, um, some of the interpretation of uh, what is allowable within the grid that the Department of Revenue sets out, that the interpretation by members of the Community Preservation Act committee may change over time. Thank you. That's really helpful to hear. Yeah, I mean, uh, Hilda's typed in the chat, you know, can you call it research and design instead of planning? And then how is it different than the writer's walk? And not, you know, and there's other projects that um, have been funded with CPA too that are, you know, more plan-based 
you know, to help, you know, essentially set up a framework for preservation. So, I mean, I think you can, you know, you can frame it that way. I still think the question will be asked and we can, you know, we could always do a little more research to try to um, have, you know, information for the committee, the CPA committee. Um, from, from Meg and Janet, uh, part of the process is that the uh, Community Preservation Act committee will review the proposals or the applications, and then they'll generate, this is usually how it works, they'll generate some questions for the applicant and the applicant goes back and you know does some work to provide answers to the questions so that there is this kind of iterative process. Is that, Robin, would you agree that that's how it's working now? Um, yeah, I think that's roughly how it's working. <laughs> Great. Okay, so maybe one thing, I, I, I feel like I'm talking too much here, but what maybe one thing to keep in mind is whether the planning project documents resources that are expected to be lost or whether the planning project is working toward uh, the uh, preservation of those or some of those resources. Yeah. Should we answer? Yeah, it, mostly we're that. Definitely, we're definitely trying to preserve the historic record. Um, uh, Faye Kaner wrote volum voluminously about it and gave her notes to, I, I don't think I'm talking out of school, to Pete Westover, who was planning to write a book, but didn't write it. And the notes are in the base, basement. Um, you know, th these are documents that, uh, that we'll lose mm -hmm. if we don't identify them and uh, bring them to life. I, I just need to add plan. To, um, sorry, sorry. I, I'm not familiar. I am familiar with this part of Amherst, love it. Um, I was involved last year in a project that's actually sounding rather similar to this in North Leverett that was coordinated both by the Leverett Library as a sort of host community. We had meetings there, of course, it was all pre-COVID. Um, and Plun Baritius um, was involved in a sort of interpretive capacity. And we had a series of meetings and site visits to what are a series of canals that run along um, the road, um, Cove Hill Road, um, the barns and, and mill sites there absolutely fascinating and fairly accessible. Um, we were a bunch of just interested people looking at this set of artifacts in the landscape, looking at the bodies of water, um, at some of the records that exist to um, support what was happening at the end of the 18th, middle of the 18th, early 19th century. They, these were enterprising, entrepreneurial signs of, of really rural Western Massachusetts families, communities, making things work. And it was really inspiring um, to be a part of those two meetings that were held at the library. I kind of fell off the map and <laughs> didn't stay involved, but um, I, I think it would be very relevant for um, both Janet and Meg to, or someone with your group to be in touch with, with them um, to see where they are and what they've, where they are in terms of the status of that work. Um, they had some similar goals to you in terms of the ways they wanted to involve community in terms of interpretive planning and plaques and things like that. And, they were really hoping that it would it would kind of unify um, parts of that of that hill that you know that area um, and potentially help to connect historic right. historic entrepreneurial sites with contemporary entrepreneurial sites. So I don't really know where I'm going with this in terms of the CPA committee, um, but. I feel like they're 
is the potential for very similar levels of research that could be done. I love that you're making it essentially a public history project um, for UMass students working with high school students. Um, and I, I don't know whether the parameters fit or not. I just think it's really great that you're bringing this um, to, to us. Thank you, Hetty. Um, we're familiar with the Leverett project, actually. Uh, Eric Johnson, the archaeologist at UMass, worked with them. And my understanding, I mean, I, you're encouraging us to learn more about it and actually talk with them in more detail. But my understanding is that they weren't able to get funding. OK. But we'll find that's a good. Uh, but it sounds very similar. Uh, vision for what they were trying to do I, yeah, what I mean, we're trying to I, do i think mm -hmm. you know, especially when we think about the 18th century in this country or in this region um we think of it as rural and in fact it isn't it's incredibly worked and managed and um the resource the natural resources issues are really important for us to be delving into more, uh, especially what's going on, you know, with climate issues and natural resources issues. And I think that, I think the opportunity for those high school students to work with students at UMass is, is really valuable and something that they would remember. Um, and also how people, entrepreneurial people without electricity were able to produce things they could sell and support their their families. It really does r remind us that we, where we, how we live now, is so dependent on uh, complex technology. I, I, I'm not. I'm getting beyond ourselves. That's not what we're trying to. Yeah. <laughs> we're not trying to make any lessons about climate change or anything. But, I, I realize um, that. <laughs> I appreciate what you said, Hetty. <laughs> I went too far with that comment. <laughs> um, can I just ask a question? Please. I've had my hand up a long time, but you didn't notice. So um, <laughs> um, I'm wondering if you should say, I guess it's too late to change the application now, but maybe when you present to the CPA committee, um, what you think is about actually having physical plaques with the QR code or whatever text identifying each site. Um, that is to me a bit of a tipping point to make it sound more like you're producing something that CPA funds would support. Um, also, I think it's a wonderful project. I would just caution you having worked on the writers, writer's walk for all these years to be very, it's great to include students, both UMass and high school, but be very cautious about using their things wholesale without really doing the research yourself as well or checking their sources, because I found a lot of um, problematic statements in their work that had been uploaded to a website for these houses. Um, so, I mean, just in saying that as a professor, you know, they're great, they can get enthusiastic, but you really have to check their work. Thank you. Could you say again your first point? It, was, it didn't come, I couldn't hear you. Identifying each site, Jan, oh, what did you well, think? In your written proposal, you didn't say anything um, clearly about having, you said some sort of little signs or something that would actually identify the site and give either a name or a QR code or something where people would then access more material. Um, whether it's a website or a QR code or whatever, I don't see that specifically laid out. And I think that could really help the CPA committee see themselves in this project. Also, you have to think about who will maintain those um, because they will be stolen, they'll be defaced, everything will happen to them. Um, and you'll have to either ask the town to maintain them or come up with a budget for that. I mean, that's down the line, but it's something to think about. Thank you. Um, you know, I think, sorry, just to interrupt, this is Nate. Yeah, um, Robin, I see you have your hand up, but yeah, quickly, are those, are all the properties town owned? I was one, that was one question I had. Yes, they're all a conservation town owned okay. from the Cushman Common down to the park. 
Okay, yeah, and then I was doing a quick search of the CPA a coalition. They have a, a project database and to Jan's point, there's, you know, in the last few years, there are, you know, probably a few dozen, two dozen projects that do um, some interpretive trail uh, restoration or work or archeology span or something, but they really do have um, interpretive markers or signs. And it really is about having interpretation of the site on the site and then making that publicly available. So it's not just creating a right. summary report and doing research on it. It's actually making this, um, making the work publicly accessible on the site and perhaps online. So I think, you know, identification markers, right. um, all those things are really important. Otherwise, it's really just a research project that, you know, to Rob, what Robin had asked it is, you know, we have to be able to, to defend it in terms of the eligibility criteria. So right. I think adding those markers or interpretation on the site is really important. Yeah, it's very much, maybe it wasn't clear in the proposal, but community archeology span is about the community taking ownership of their history and protecting it and no traveling, you know, walking the trail and so on. But that's helpful, Nate, to put that stronger. In the, I think we can augment the proposal maybe. Mm -hmm. Also, you might yeah. consider doing what we plan to do for the writer's walk, and that is having some sort of literature as small as a card available at the visitor center in Amherst so that people know about it and, if, you know, have a reason to go out there. Right. And Robin, did you have your hand up? Oh, um, I, yeah, I just wanted to make a comment that, I mean, it, that mentioning the markers in the proposal definitely points to something more physical, but if they're not an actual deliverable of the project, if the project doesn't create them, then that also might be a sticking point. Sorry to, sorry to be a stickler here, but um, uh, I'm just trying to see how, and I'm, I'm actually curious about Nate, about the history of the Writer's Walk and how that because um, I hadn't seen anything in terms of planning um, being funded for specifically that wasn't out of the historic commission itself. I think that speaks to Jane's earlier comment about, you know, if the composition of the board or understanding of CPA changes, then, you know, maybe the writer's walks sign project would be reviewed differently today than it was when it was funded, but. Right, right. Yeah. So Nate, I'm, I have my hand up. I'm sorry. Um, your question was when I was going to ask is who owns these properties. And so if it's part the town does under a conservation a covenant um, to the proposers, is there any second phase of trying to preserve the more intact cellars or walls or whatever? Um, not all of them, I'm sure, can be restored and they can't be restored to their original, but to preserve what exists now? Yes, the, the hope is to preserve the what's there now, but not just the physical structures, but the history. Of, of course, but, but in order to continue to, to promote the history, there, one would think that there would be certain of these structures that could be physically um, made stronger or, or more preserved or, or sure. whatever. Just, just a question. Right, I don't, this is what the planning is about, is how much will all this cost, you know, creating a budget, creating a timeline, which sites would be addressed first and second. Uh, that's what, why we need a plan. Janet, did you have something to add? Uh, no, I think you covered it. That's, that's the idea is, is to, basically scope it out and then have a second phase. Right. Mm -hmm. The planning is a big deal because we don't know the cost. Uh, there's just a lot of, to make this really work, we think we need a good plan and we need a good archeologist who, who works something like half time, pulling together all the pieces, creating a budget, uh, identifying which sites are most uh, accessible, the timeline, how many years long is this project? Is this a five-year project? Is it a 10-year project? Uh, you know, if we could do say three sites a year, there are literally dozens of sites. So it's a, it's a big project. And so we're starting with planning. And none of us volunteers 
has the time or the skill to, to take that on. I guess we could go back to graduate school <laughs> and become archeologists, but we can't really, so. This is, it's why we want a planning grant just to think some of this, to think all of this through. So I'm going to throw out something and ask for feedback from Nate, Ben and Robin in particular and anybody else who uh, would like to comment on this. Um, I'm looking again, at, uh, and this is again about the question of eligibility of the project. Um, if this is along a trail, if these are historic resources along the trail that goes from Mill River eastward toward Cushman, um, then it could also maybe be considered partially a recreation category. Um, and creation is permitted under recreation, although creation is not permitted under uh, historic preservation. So um, I'm wondering if that would, would seem um, one way to uh, uh, kind of ha have a have a get have the the planning nature of this more more um, acceptable elig eligible. Robin, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, that's a really interesting idea. I mean, certainly, I think the CPA can probably consider it under either category. Um, it does seem. I mean, conservation and, and recreation seem more um, in, in line with, uh, yeah, in line with the grid. I mean, I don't mean to be such a strict uh, interpreter, but um, having gone through last, the last round of things and knowing where people are thinking um, and to, you know, to not, to not see it as sitting on the grid doesn't, isn't, isn't a question of the value of the project. I mean, I think it's a wonderful project. Um, I'm just more of the details person here. So I think that's a great idea. And I could certainly bring that up at the CPA as well, that, you know, it be considered for funding under recreation as well, or instead, um, if that's a better fit. Sorry, I stepped away. This is Nitigan. Yeah, it can't be conservation because um, you have to have acquired the land with CPA funds to rehab or restore it. Mm -hmm. um, so it could, um, it's same thing with, uh, um, oh, recreation actually is a little bit more um, flexible. So it is an interesting idea. I was on the uh, Puffer's Pond Committee long time ago, long, long time ago. And one of, the mo one of the interesting things that we became immediately aware of was how conservation and recreation are at odds with each other in terms of how land is used. Yeah. And, um, People don't want to change the trails around Pupper's Pond because they really like walking really close to the pond. They don't want to conserve the some of the habitat. But um, my concern about seeing this as recreation is whether the, the goal is to preserve these sites, not to jump around them. But um, I may be misunderstanding recreation. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it also may be that further down um, I mean, further down the funding path, and I know that I think you said you didn't have other funders in your um, in application, but if there were another way to get funding for the planning, even if you did it piece by piece, you know, as it unfolds, it becomes more of a physical project and maybe then falls more into the CPA category under historic preservation. And this is, of course, what happened with the Levered project, not not being able to get that initial plan, but that's true. We might be able to find some other funding. We so, but I'm hope we're going to give it our all with the CPA committee. Um, so Meg to and Janet, uh, the process now. I just learned very pretty recently that um, the CPA committee will need the historical commission's recommendations about projects by. Is it November 12th then? Correct, yep, that's, that's when they're actually voting. So probably a few days before then. Okay. What was that date again, November what? 12th. Yeah. So the Historical Commission will actually, we realized that the Historical Commission will need another meeting in, so that we can consider all of the applications adequately. Um, 
so in this, so we really appreciate um, having you come and discuss this proposal with us so we are uh, much better informed about it as we, we need to, you know, kind of sort out our recommendations to the CPA committee. So this really helps. Um, uh, so this, I'm just sort of wanting to let you know what our next steps are. Um, and I, I think maybe we've um, offered some thoughts about what the CPA committee may ask about and perhaps some strategies to prepare or have ready. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Very helpful. Janet, do you agree this is helpful? Um, I, I can't thank you all enough. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was wonderful and thank you. Well, thanks for, thanks for being here to, to talk with us about it. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, and feel free to stay around for the rest of the CPA conversation. We'll have it at least one more, probably more than one uh, proposal to, to consider. Um, so we should go to the good news. Yep. yep, perfect. So we have, um, I believe Nancy Schro Schroeder is here from there. So I'm going to promote Nancy to panelist. No, I don't care. I'll find out. Oops, I think I hope they shut me off. And there you go. So, um, Nancy, you're going to have to unmute. Yep. Thank you, Ben. Thanks. Great. So, yep, we can hear you now. Um, and I, I'm not sure if you see the screen, but I have your uh, proposal up. I do see it. Okay, great. You see it. So, Nancy, um, I you may have uh, you may have been here before when I um, just asked the District One Neighborhood Association just to share with us any anything. I mean, for Goodwin Church, share anything else with us that you'd like to. We've um, looked at the application itself, mm -hmm. and we'll appreciate anything you have to say that um, will give us a better understanding of the project. And then um, certain commissioners may have other questions for you. Right. Um, I really, I, I don't, I think I was as clear as I could be in writing the proposal. Um, um, I think it'd be easier for me if you ask questions. Um, well, well I'll, I mean, just, I'll just say we're trying to put on uh, a new roof and replace the chimney and put in insulation to the building, which is, uh, which was built in 1910. And uh, we feel that that's a, a good preservation project. Um, and it's certainly historic uh, uh, and historic building. Yeah, and here's, here's the, uh, I believe this is the National Register uh, sheet, yeah. or at least some information about it. That's church. right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it, it's on the National Register. And as I said in here, it's one of, what is it? One of five historic buildings uh, named within the 20, 2005 Amherst Preservation Plan. Mm -hmm. So either the uh, National Historic uh, information, there it is. That's yeah. the information. Okay. So I think it, there are some yeah, pictures as well. It's individually, it's, it's part of a district uh, or, or it, listed. Or part of a contributing structure? Yeah. Um, I think it's individually listed. Yes. Well, it's individually. I remember seeing that. Yeah, on the Registry of Historic Places. Uh, on the National, okay, all right. On the National Register. Right. Okay, so if it's on the National Historic Register, that makes it a, a contributing building uh, for, to, a, to a district, I think. Uh, sorry, this is Nate. It is individually listed. Oh. Uh, the church building itself. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just looked quickly. 
Okay. We, um, yeah. Is it part of a? Is it part of a local district commission? As well. No, the local historic district doesn't extend down that, that far. I was there just the other day. Um, it's very close to the barns that we went to look at back in the summer. Right. On on Woodside. Oh, we looked at some right on South Pleasant. Ah. So I remember the original application um, that we approved and your description of what you had asked for. What ended up being done exactly with the money that was the 12,000 12, you got? No, you got 25,000. Yeah. Uh, 12 went to uh, Gillen um, oh. Associates and 12 basically went to Mass uh, Archaeology. Um, mm. Oh, so you didn't actually get a chance to do any of the work? We weren't intending to. Oh. It was uh, Bill Gillen uh, presented us with a capital needs plan. Mm. Okay. As, I capital, say, yeah. as I say in the proposal, it, given all the architectural accessibility requirements and the fact that we have no real land around the building, it, it, we have a perimeter maybe of 20 feet. Um, the plans that uh, that he came up with in terms of meeting all our capital needs uh, was not feasible. Okay, I remember it being really difficult. Robin Slant raised. I'm sorry. Uh, Robin Fordham, your hand is raised. Yeah, I just um, want. We don't have to discuss this a second, but um, I wanted Nate to or you to maybe remind us. I there is some sort of issue with the intersection of CPA funds and churches and houses of worship. Is that correct? There shouldn't be any, <laughs> any issue there, but um, okay. some people may think so, but this has not, this has nothing to do with separation of church and state. It's, it's Oh, I thought there was, I thought there was actually a decision around it, a challenge at some point recently, but maybe I'm remembering. Something no, you're else. right. But um, um uh, there's a, um, was it, I think it was in Concord actually, um, or Acton, and there's like a three, three part test to determine, but I think that, uh, it's different here. Um, cause it really is just, uh, preserving the structure. There's not, you know, any other, any other, um, anything, anything else is happening. Well, it's. It's yeah. not unlike preserving the window at the Unitarian Church. You were talking okay. about historical, historic right. preservation. And right, Rob, Rob, I, I was thinking, um, I thought you meant the separation of church and state, which was brought up once or twice at town meeting. Um, but no, you're right. There is a more recent case. And um, yeah, that's because that the is, windows are windows are outward facing and therefore a public resource but, but but anything interior would be a different issue is that what it is no the 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 one with the recent case was um there was um there's some question of whether or not the cpa uh, money was actually helping to fund church operations and not necessarily restore the structure so there's some question about kind of financial feasibility or capacity of the of a you know church or parish um, there's some question about when this case that was in question, they restored some uh, religious um, imagery inside the church and whether or not that was across the line. Um, and I forget the third, the third piece, but in any event, I feel like this case is you know, pretty clear that they're following a plan to really uh, restore the structure, you know, the outward structure. So it's not, but, and I, I, right, I okay. think, I think, we, I think we could. Um, it also came up with the Jewish community um, building that old church when we were restoring the steeple and everything. There was a lot of blowback from somebody. I don't remember if it was town meeting or someone saying that right. we should be funding that. We shouldn't give them money because they were a religious organization. Right. Amherst has a kind of a mixed record with funding historic preservation of uh, religious structures. Um, so CPA is funded a good one before. It's funded 
uh, first congregational church, but, but first congregational in the end decided to turn it down. Uh, Hope Church, uh, CPA is funded. And uh, Amherst, I think it was town meeting declined to fund preservation at the North Amherst Con Congregational Church for, for this kind of pseudo argument about separation of church and state. Um, and I, I agree with Nate that it has nothing to, really it doesn't apply. Okay. Yeah, so this, yeah, the CPA, sorry, the CPA uh, coalition has a little bit of a summary on this court case, right? It was an act and, um, but I, I don't, I think it's, uh, I don't think it's applicable, um, you know, and if that's brought up, we may have to have, you know, town attorney just provide some, some help there, just if there's confusion. Yeah, I was just anticipating that question. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have a question about um, the insulation. Has the, has the structure ever been insulated before? Um, there is some insulation in the ceiling. I don't think there is any insulation in the walls. I don't know that for sure. Okay. The, um, the reason I ask is that um, uh, trying to sort of move move beyond maintenance into preservation. So if it if it's newly introduced, that's a that's to your advantage. <laughs> ah. Well, I know that there there is some insulation in the in the attic at this point. Um, I, I can sort through the capital needs assessment again. I wasn't looking specifically for um, that in terms of the walls, but I, can, I could find that out. Um, are there other questions, comments from commissioners or, or Ben or Nate? Yeah, my only comment, Nancy, is the budget is pretty low. Usually we wouldn't say that, but <laughs> you know, given that the funds um, would not be available until next July and, you know, you're not sure that CET could actually pay for the insulation mm -hmm. or it could help subsidize it. I just want to make sure that, you know, I mean, you could say that, you know, is there a contingency in there? Is there 20% or 25%? Mm -hmm. I mean, no, there, if, there if, you know, I just want to make sure that you wouldn't, you know, you'd get the funding and then you might not have enough. So you right. Know, you added five thousand more on, or six thousand. I don't know what the right number well, is, but yeah. And Nate, I was, you know, I got specific proposals for this, um, and I didn't know, and I, I understood that we needed to submit them. I guess so. Um, that's what you know. Would would I add a contingency of twenty percent? I mean, does that? I don't know. I've never mm -hmm. done this before. Did I? Um, I would recommend adding it because it's actually quite hard to find a roofer. Um, you know, the time frame of finding a good roofer in Amherst at the moment is probably 18 months to two years. And even though Goodwin is quite a small building, it's a prominent building and an important building. So mm -hmm. that's something to bear in mind. Yeah. Well, I, I can't, you know, I can't guarantee that Eugene and Jim, Jim Battistoni will do this work. They said they would next year. Um, they, he, Eugene has, has had a connection with Goodwin and has done work many, many years ago. So he, he came right over to look at it. I, you know, I, I know that things change, um, but. Also that, that um, bid you got was before COVID and I've just discovered mm -hmm. that the cost mm -hmm. of water, for instance, has gone up two to two and a half times its original yeah. a lot of material no I, I got i got all these bids um within this month oh i thought i saw um 919 yeah. on there okay well still it could change by the time you have it done yeah. i would definitely suggest you make it higher they can bring it down and give you less <laughs> okay yeah, really so pat it because you may get less anyway yeah yeah 
I that's that sounds great. I'll I'll be happy to add a contingency. Yeah, I mean, I think if you say it's a twenty five thousand dollar project, and you know you got twenty percent, that you know I would just put that tack you know five or six thousand onto your CPA request just to make sure you're not, you know, you're not short a little bit. I just great. Yep. And it could be. I agree. Um, I think it was Hetty who said the. You know, there could be some permitting involved that could be longer before this starts. And then if um, materials escalate in price. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's if you're trying to convince me to add money to this, I, I'm 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 fine with that. That'd be great. I and appreciate it. What do you think about her statement that some of this would be held in reserve? Isn't that a mistake? I, I thought it said that um, if it wasn't used, it would be um, given back. Yeah, that's what I said. I thought it said if it receives matching funding, the church will have approximately ten thousand reserved to address future repairs and deferred. Oh, I'm, that's that's I'm, that is within our internal. We have we have some money um, from the fundraiser that we had uh, in, in October of oh, twenty nineteen. I, I wouldn't tell CPA that. Hmm. I wouldn't tell CPA that. Well, we need the reserve in order to keep going with our maintenance needs, we don't have any money. So the 10,000, if, if we don't have to spend all the money we got from fundraising on, on a roof and insulation, that means we have money well, because, in reserve for- Okay, well, you would reword word that then, because it looks like, the way you wrote it, it looks like if you get the funding, you'll have 10,000 you can put in reserve. It sounds like you pay money. Yeah. Yep, okay, yep. Maybe just a, you know, yeah. Thank you. The application has gone in, but it's a matter of being, I think, being prepared mm -hmm. to answer the question if somebody raises it. No, or or address it right off the bat. Sure, that's yeah. helpful. Thank you. Other comments, Robin? I saw your square light up for a moment. It's like a little bit like Hollywood. No, no, no. I was probably just typing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, if if all questions and comments are settled, um, Nancy, let me ask you if you have questions for us. Um, I don't think so. I, I think it's so for me at least. It's so straightforward in terms of just getting you know, new shingles, a new chimney and some insulation. And I, I hear what you're saying about whether it's uh, the insulation is um, added or not added, um, you know, or, or already there. I, I don't know how to deal with that one exactly, but um, I guess we can wrestle that one to the ground with the CPA. Yeah. Uh, so no, I guess not. All right, well, thank you. It's mm -hmm. Great to learn more about this project, and it certainly is an important one. So. And, and I also have to say, I'm thrilled about the Mill River. I, I sat and listened to all of it, and I'd been walking with a friend the other day, and he was pointing out all the all the um, uh -huh. work that river did at one point, and how important it was to to begin to talk about that. So um, I'm really I want to put a plug in for that one too. <laughs> uh -huh. So thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Um, Great. We have some town proposals. Uh, yeah, there's two two town proposals uh, for the slate roof repairs and for the town hall steps. Um, so I'm going to bring in Jeremiah Laplante, who's the town's facility manager and who put together these applications. Um, let's see. Jeremiah, are you here? Let's see. I'm, um, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for hanging in there. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see the screen, but I have your uh, applications up on the screen right now. The uh, slate roof repairs is here. Um, there you are. Great. So, um, Jeremiah, are there things that uh, you'd like to tell us about the project? Uh, I, I guess it's consolidating 
it's a three roofing project? yeah yeah three three of the town buildings so it, it is uh, uh the town hall um munson memorial library and the north amherst school so looking at three of those those different buildings uh all of which uh, as you can see, you could use um, some uh, slate roof work or, or um, one of the recommendations uh, from a slate roof specialist was that North Amherst be, be replaced. Um, uh, this individual didn't see it being uh, very uh, cost effective to do repairs because we would be seeing some more and more pairs um as we as we go on it's it, and it was really just the sort of the nature of the slate that's that's on that that particular building and would that would that slate uh be replaced with the same kind of slate yeah yeah so so all of them they they would they would be replaced with with like kinds so it, and say if we were to look at the the uh, town hall the town hall has that beautiful red slate and that's quarried in in uh, in in like the new york vermont line uh and there's so few of quarries that actually um produce that slate so I, I would hate to see it replaced with anything but that New York slate. Um, there is about 15 slate uh, uh, slate tiles uh, on Town Hall that have been replaced with a gray. And I would have to guess what they did was they pulled some tiles from an area that you just wouldn't see. It's, it's sort of in the shadow of the tower, the clock tower. And, and use those probably in an area that's much more visible. Um, but it would be nice to see those uh, replaced and, and have uh, the, the original red slate. Munson has, uh, I think it's, it, it was a, a Vermont um, malt purple uh, slate. It's much thicker, almost three quarters of an inch thick in, in some areas. So it's a much different uh, slate tile there. Uh, and, it, and if you look at the write-up for the Munson Memorial, I think it's not so much a slate issue at Munson. It's, it's working on the, the flashing and, and water, sort of water management. Uh, so mm -hmm. we have all that flashing in, in those valleys. Um, I know that they, uh, they spoke about the peak. Um, it is a slate peak. Um, he, he had mentioned going over it with copper because it would be obviously a lot easier putting a, a copper piece up there that would look period, um, um, like the town hall has a copper, a copper peak. Um, and then also talked, talked about, uh, gutters on the rear of Munson. Um, Munson has had some water infiltration issues in the basement, not much, but I think having these, these uh, particulars um, repaired or replaced uh, could help with the, that um, water infiltration. Um, and kind of going back to, to North Amherst, kind of sort of long way around, but yes, North Amherst would be replaced. It is a more traditional Vermont gray slate um, on the rear of the building, there's more brown tile, um, which is pretty standard to have that brown gray mix, uh, but the, the brown is just deteriorating. Um, so what that will mean is, is the, the wooden structure underneath will start to suffer. Mm -hmm. um, and like any good building, if you have a good roof and a good foundation, anything in between could be repaired or replaced, but you need to maintain those two pieces in order to keep the structures alive. So I have a couple of questions. One is you mentioned early on that one of the roofs, I think it might've been North Amherst, was um, it had deteriorated because of the type of the tile? Yes. And so what is the expected longevity of, an, of a new roof and how would it be maintained? So typically from, from my research and from the information that I received from the slate uh, uh, 
professional is, is we could see slate last anywhere from 70 years to 200 years, depending on which, which slate is put up there. And I know he was saying that even the depth of it, when it was quarried um, also plays a factor in it. Um, some of my research about the, the, the Vermont and New York, it sounded like they tend to last about 125 years. Um, like any roof though, I, if, if you were to put a, an asphalt or a metal roof on it, they all do have a life expectancy and, and uh, both Town Hall and North Amherst uh, uh, really, they, they owe us nothing. Um, you know, the buildings were, were built in, in the late 1800s. And, and uh, so they've, they've, they've met all the expectation of the slate. And my second question has to do with the gutters you mentioned, I think for Munson. Yes. Um, is that replacing existing gutters? On the rear of the building, it would be. So on the rear of the building, there's a, there's a smaller, I don't believe it's a four inch, it looks like a three inch uh, aluminum. So traditionally it would be a copper gutter and they would typically have to remove a few courses of tile because of the weight of the gutters and to have it properly flashed in, they would typically replace or, or remove three to four courses or it could be upwards of three feet, but it's, it's about the same um, so that they can properly fasten it to the roof structure. So um, that, that is a, a big gutter way up there. So it needs to be done. Uh. Are there other questions from members of the commission? I'll say that an attendee named Mark has his hand raised. Yeah. Mark, if you want to unmute yourself, make your comment. Hey, everyone. We are live from my backyard where I am smoking a brisket and some ribs. I am now smoking these meats here. Okay, I, that didn't, I'd muted him. Was that a relevant comment? I'm not sure. No. <laughs> Jeremiah, do you, were you expecting a mark? From I, I wasn't, I, and I have also already had dinner. So unfortunately <laughs> I would not be enjoying that the smoked meats, although it did sound delicious. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, that, that was a pretty tame Zoom bomb, if that's what yeah, that was. Yeah. But. <laughs> so I'm not. Uh, uh, Hetty is actually raising her hand, I believe. Okay. For some oh. reason, I've lost my hand raising feature here. I can't see it, but please, Hetty, go ahead. Um, roofs are just incredibly important. Um, I think to buildings. I know that sounds pretty inane, but um, it, as Jeremiah said, if we take care of our roofs of our historic properties, we're doing the least we can as stewards of um, our historic fabric. And so I would just want to endorse the applications and their um, what they're asking for. Um, flashing is also really important. Nothing sexy necessarily, but just incredibly important. Slate roofs are really, really beautiful. Um, hard to find people who can actually put slate roofs on. So we're not even just taking care of the property. We're, properties we're also providing employment for people who continue to know how to do slate roofs that's good in my book hey, this is nate thanks hetty um the eighty five thousand membrane is that the north amherst school for the back portion of the yeah yep the the flat portion of it um i haven't been up there and looked at it um, as it requires getting up on an extension ladder uh, but the, the roofer that uh, specializes in slate was up there and had a look at it. And from what he's saying, I have a lot of experience with that same style uh, membrane roof. It's a 
it's an it's an older J.P. Stevens product, and what happens uh, with that product is is it gets a lot of like almost like uh, the thickness of a hair, these fissures in it. So as it ages, these fissures start to develop and then you'll start to see some leak, leaks in it. Uh, it. It was widely popular because everyone wanted to go with that white, that white membrane roof as it uh, helped with the, the heating and cooling of the buildings. Uh, but unfortunately, they just they haven't stood up uh, the test of time, kind of like the some of the Firestone products. Yeah, my th my thought is that um, as a total request package, it's quite a bit, and so yes, you know, my thought is the CPA committee may ask you to prioritize structures and drop the membrane because that seems like the least preservation oriented piece of this, right? I mean, it's really, um, you know, it's a capital need. I'm not sure yeah. how. I know the North Amherst school is old, but in terms of visibility and preservation, the, you know, the front of the building, the sides are really visible. The back right. part is not. not so much. I just, you know, that's all I was just thinking. Yeah. About and, and I really, originally I was, I was sort of weighing that cause I figured this would be the, would be asked to me. <laughs> um, uh, but, but <laughs> the membrane, the membrane does run underneath the slate. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far it does. So if we were to replace all of the slate and then in, in, a couple, in the coming years decided to do the membrane, uh, it would require s some additional slate work. We would have to remove uh, the lower uh, few courses again uh, and then flash it all in with the membrane. Um, so if, if it could be done all at once, that would be the best case scenario. But you, you know, Nay, I, I just, I had a feeling. I was like, wow, that's a big number. That's a big number. And I was already starting to try to think about the priorities in my head. Okay, I'm gonna ask Jan to make her comment. Jan? Actually, that was my question. I was gonna ask him if he could prioritize the three buildings. Um, I also wanted to ask if the copper, um, isn't that also to stop mold and mildew? Um, from farming, does slate have to be cleaned the way other roofs do of mold? Uh, that that I'm I'm not sure. I do know that yes, copper does have the properties to to inhibit uh, that that types of mold. Um, I, okay. I I don't know that it's necessarily used be because of that um, for those uh, older older uh, buildings. I think uh, if we were to look at some of the older structures, you would you would either find lead flashing or copper, and copper just tend to be if you if you could afford it. It yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> so would you um, would you did you put them in the breakdown in order of priority? Town Hall, Munson, North Amherst School, or? Um, I, I would I would say I don't have I, I haven't nailed that down yet where where my heart heart is I, I know that the town hall is is the least amount um, and in and, and that is the most forward facing building uh, for the town of Amherst um, but if I was to look at the other two uh, you know they both serve uh, the community one one has, um, these uh, infant toddler programs and, and community action, you know, the uh, North, North Amherst School, and then the Munson Library uh, sees just so many uh, uh, towns, uh, people from South Amherst. There's, yeah, and it's not just the library, it's also a meeting hall and a polling site. Exactly. Lot. Yeah, yeah the, the back hall is, from, from what I hear, I, it's been pretty empty from what I hear. It, it's always... Uh, a bustle in there with a lot of activity. So yeah, I'm just pulling up the Google Street View just so here's the back piece that yeah. had been mentioned. And you know, here's the um, school building and I'll just go around to the, you know, if you go to the front, you can see the, um, you know, this, I mean, even here, it looks pretty old um, yeah. in weather and spots, but. Yeah. There's a lot of rusting. So if you see on, on the doorway and some other areas uh, towards the right, 
you can see rusting. And a lot of that rusting is just due to the, the nails in, in any of that, that substructure that's, that's starting to deteriorate and wear over time. So you'll, you'll see the streaks of rust on the slate. So they're, they're being held up there, but, but not by a lot. And just a quick question, Jeremiah, the estimate, does that include the portico, the entry too? The, there wasn't any, I would have to assume, but I would, I would probably like to touch base with uh, um, Meehan. Uh, there was no breakout for it and he didn't, in, in our conversation, it didn't sound like there was going to be um, a separate line item. It was only for the membrane mm -hmm. that there was a breakout. Jeremiah, what can you tell me anything about what the what kind of capital renewal budget the town carries and um, uh, in deferred maintenance for all of its structures? Uh, are these buildings included in long-term maintenance plans and budgets? There is a lot of envelope and in exterior maintenance. Uh, in the capital, um, I don't. I don't believe that there was anything for the roofs at North Amherst, uh, and I think partly that was not fully understanding where we were sort of at in in the the slate's uh, um, lifespan. Um, but I, I would have to say that the town is is. I'm relatively new. I I came aboard in late April, so. Um, what I see is sort of what has already existed. And I will have to say the town is phenomenal with setting aside money, these capital, uh, this capital funding for these types of repairs. Um, there is, there is a, uh, some, we're gonna talk about the stairs next at town hall and there is some funding for that. Uh, it, but, but like I said, there is, there is money out there um, for envelope and exterior building repairs, just not, to the extent that North Amherst needs right now. Okay. So for some projects in the past, uh, I'm thinking in particular of the Jones Library, there have been questions about supplanting funds. If there are existing funds for this kind of long-term maintenance, um, it is, may not be reasonable to expect that the community Community Preservation Act fund would replace those funds. So I think, uh, you know, the Historical Commission would like to be very clear about that. And I, I assume that the CPA committee would also. Yeah, I, and I, I had was looking at that, figuring if we had some money set aside and, and the total cost of the project was going to exceed the capital money that we had, that we would be giving up that to include that into the, the cost of this. Or... Okay. I, I think we would like to know that in advance. Um, instead of giving back the money, we'd like to know what's budgeted. So okay. we know what an appropriate request would be to support. I would have to look at that then to see exactly what, what there is for capital uh, funds for North Amherst specifically. Okay, that, yeah. And, and for Town Hall and, and Munson Library also. Yeah. Town Hall, I can tell you, it's 144,000. <laughs> because I was doing the research for the stairs and the roof. So I was adding up everything, exterior envelope, stairs, all of the things combined came up to around 144,000. Great. Right. Does the Head Start program pay any rent for the North Amherst School? I believe they do. I just don't know what that amount is. Okay, and that doesn't go into the town budget for maintaining the building directly or anything? I, I, I can't, I don't have that information. I, I would have to look at and I could get that information for you. All right, are there any other questions? Robin, Jane, Hetty, Pat? Oh, I just think it would be important for us to have that financial information so that we would be able to weigh how much the CPA should be. Um, all right, Jeremiah, would you like to move on to the next proposal? Certainly. Okay. 
Great. Uh, Nate, do you either want to zoom to town hall or? Um... Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, let me. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> And then Jan, you had your hand raised, but maybe that was a leftover hand raise. Yeah, I think it went away when I asked the question. All right. So the second request is to uh, repair the front steps to town hall. Um, there has already been some great work that was done on the, the big arching doorways. Uh, those were put back in, I think it was uh, early May, and they just look phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to sort of continue those efforts and, and have the, the stairs um, repaired. So even in this, this photo, you can see on the left hand side or right hand side, uh, on the walls, on the side, the side of the stairs, you can see the gapping that there is. And even the, the, these sort of, I'll call them sort of insensitive repairs that's happened at the bottom step uh, of those stairs. Um, so I'm really looking at trying to get the funds to pull that whole structure out piece by piece. They will, lay, they will label every single one of those granite stones and then pull out whatever that sub, whatever the substructure is in, in the soils and put down a new substructure um, and then lay all that granite steps and, and blocks on top of that. Um, because the stairs, uh, I mean, I, I think in, in my, my write up, I said this, you know, these stairs, this door has welcomed the townspeople for, for over a hundred years. And, and we really want to make sure that, that they are in the, the best shape they can be. And um, they, they are exposed to all the weather elements. Um, and, and again, just the weight of that is, is starting to, to wear on these stairs. You see some arching in each, in each of those steps where, where the structures on either side are is sort of pushing into the, into the ground. Um, and that's why you see them almost like sliding forward. So I think it's really important that, that we pull that apart and, and rebuild it and, and put it back um, like it was uh, put there, you know, over a hundred years ago. So you're not looking to replace the granite used in the steps? No. You're looking more to make a firmer foundation and, and rebuild using the same materials? Correct. Yep. Uh, everything. The, the handrails, all of that to, to keep them, to clean them up and, and put them back. Um, and and in, in the proposal, I had also included the, the south facing stairs. Uh, so those are, there's a small set of stairs that face the church uh, and they, they could use um, some TLC as well. And it's a similar, similar type issues. Uh, some of the pointing is is just crumbling out uh, and you see some leaching coming out of that so you have that calcium and lime that's coming out of mm -hmm. out of the pointing um, and it's it's on the granite so um, and it's it's moisture it's frost um, so it really is all, all of our new england climate really plays into it but beyond that it's massive granite stones um, that are just sort of sinking a little bit. Uh, Jeremiah, does the, uh, I, I know that the town hall was repointed, I can't remember whether it was 2007 or like 1997, um, but do you know, were the steps addressed at that point? I, I, I'm not sure about that. I, I know that there was a the major renovation in 97, 98. Uh, it does look like there's been repointing in a lot of the granite block around that, that lower band around the building. I would imagine that they probably address some of the stairs, um, but it, it's in some ways a little bit different. There's a different approach because there's, there's just these monolithic blocks opposed to uh, a, a, a less deep, it's like a veneer that's around the rest of the building. So 
Um, you really need to remove as much of the pointing as possible, as deep as possible. Um, it, Cause if not, it'll just push it out again. And that's what we're seeing in a lot of that, the pointing. Yeah, I think the, um, this is, they actually think Jane, the repointing may have been done in the 2000, 2012. Oh, 12. Oh. Um, I think it was in some of that um, was done, but they, I'm not sure they, I know they, they did try to, um, you know, tuck in the, uh, these gaps, but it's just, it's just yeah. falling out. Uh -huh. And so there wasn't any, you know, any, um, you know, it wasn't part of the project to try to stabilize this or do any stonework here. It was just, yeah. you know, and I think they may have done some like caulking, like, you know, Jeremiah had said on these steps here, just for water infiltration, but it wasn't, you know, that wasn't really part of the project. I mean, they really, you know, they really worked on, you know, they yeah. really did yes. a good job, you know, doing this and they fluted it really well and everything, but they did steps. They just, you can even see it's just like, yeah, you know, it kind of falling out. So yeah. the, the gaps are actually too big for the, um, I can see it right there on the bottom step, I think. Yeah, it's just, it's the gaps are too big for what they use. So, um, Jeremiah, I mean, are they actually going to take these blocks out and reset them? Because I, I mean, right now the yep. gaps are too big. Yeah. Yeah. They would take them out. They would clean them off, stage them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they would be able to pull out any substructure that's there, mm -hmm. uh, pour a new sort of foundation, um, bring in some soil compact, and then rebuild the stairs over that. And then just, I just, my, we just mentioned that, would these railings be able to um, be kept and replaced or do you need yep. new railings? Yeah, the, the intent is to keep those railings okay. and that center, that center uh, brass railing as well. Okay. D yeah, that might need a variance from the AAB mass. There are probably more than one variance <laughs> that's gonna be needed. <laughs> um, be, beyond, yes, because that, that center handrail is, is probably around a three inch diameter. Um, the steps are also closer to eight inches uh, as a, as a rise. So neither one of those meet the, the ADA regulations. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to have to, I'm, right. we would have to get variances. Mm -hmm. So 144,000 you mentioned earlier, can that be applied against the 265? One, one, 144 was everything I got. That would be me turning out all my pockets. <laughs> uh -huh. um, um, but we do have a specific line item for the front entryway of Town Hall. So the, the town had set aside $100,000. We used a portion of that money uh, to redo the the doors. Um, so I still have around 74,000 left over of that particular line item. Mm -hmm. um, but looking at some of the other exterior uh, capital funds, line items and building envelope, it all, it all in total comes to 144. If I could, I would love to retain some for other, other items. I know I have windows I can, I can, replace, um, uh, but there is 144 total for exterior work. Okay. Great, um, Nate or uh, Jeremiah, was there, I noticed you sent like uh, architects drawings, I think that Kuhn Riddle had done. Um, yes, yes, so can... those are those are draft draw, uh, um, architectural drawings for this, the stairs um, and there's, um, and there's also, I believe it was the was like the bid documents or draft draft or construction documents yeah. as well. Um, there you go. Yep, the bids. Yep, there's the bid set has some drawings. So it it highlights some of these areas that are are very concerning. You can see some of those lower blocks. See how all of them have a coding. All, every mm -hmm. block has a code. Um, so all of that information oh, yeah. on that side. So we would know when those, when that veneer goes back, it would be in exactly the same place. And, and just, just in the last couple of days, I, I did get another, uh, a bill. So, or, or really a proposal. Um, so, cause again, for this one, the, the money it's, it's a quite a bit of money to have these stairs done. 
Um, but I, I got a proposal to bring this draft set into a construction set and that's that's going to cost 18,000 so mm -hmm. just nothing's cheap um so and so uh the construction documents is that included in so here? the construction documents yeah i have that would that would go into all this money here yeah yeah so the 18,000 is represented in architectural assessment Ar design well that would just be for the south steps yeah right. so the 18,000 would fall in that 120 and 90. so the the variances in the permitting um would fall into that that 90 as well and in, in the material storage and staging and that that is all of those granite those monolithic blocks um, being pulled away and cleaned and then and set somewhere. So I think that's going to be a sort of a logistic challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of granite. Yeah, it's a lot of granite, and I don't want it to turn into a playset on the common. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'll, I'll just say that uh, you know we have small projects applications that come to CPA and the Historical Commission from uh, smaller organizations and. You know, I expect the town to budget for its uh, for its maintenance and repair. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm kind of torn about these projects. They are, you know, I can see them as preservation projects, but I don't think the CPA fund is intended to be a piggy bank for maintenance, uh, especially for a budget as large as the town of Amherst has. Um, so uh, I. That's a, a personal view, and I don't I don't anticipate that everyone will agree with it. But um, I, I think you know that's a concern when we're dealing with uh, monies that are intended to serve community preservation purposes. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is Robin. I just wanted to um, add or add to that. Um, looking for the same sort of clarification. I guess I look at these projects and I think what part of it, because it's historic and requires extra care, um, needs extra funding from the town um, that would be a good use of CPA funds, if that, if that makes sense, that, you know, that you're always going to have these maintenance issues, but what aspect of it adds something to the cost of doing it the right way. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to see more more detail in that regard. Yeah, I was wondering if you didn't want to separate the two, the south steps um, and the main entrance, uh, just to make it smaller, um, and then write the description of what you're doing um, more as Robin was saying that it is preservation of a historic piece with a particular cost because it's preservation not just maintenance. I think that's more convincing if you can slant it that way um, and that it costs more because of that. I mean you sort of said that to us that you know people have tried to do a bit of tuck pointing and a bit of out and this and that, but it hasn't been right. And they really, as historical blocks of stone, need to be moved, clean, and you know, reinforced uh, need. And that's, I'd, I'd like to see in the application that it's different than maintenance, I guess. That makes sense? Yep, absolutely. You know, yeah, I, I tried to write up and, and sort of at least speak to that a, a bit and, and is you could see the years of, of these sort of minor repairs. Um, and, and I think that was the town, you know, trying to keep up on stuff, uh, on those general repairs. Uh, but some of them you could see are, 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 are really a, a little insensitive. And, and I think having, having us go to uh, a, a specialized stone, the stonemasons, someone who deals with um, monolithic block 
rather than um, someone who might build a firebox uh, at, at a residential home. It's, it, it is a, a, a different, more unique individual. Um, w- Masons aren't really working with, with these large blocks like they once did. Uh, mm-hmm. So trying to find someone that can do that. I, th- I think the front steps, we just sort of found ourselves in a, in a position that it's, it's not necessarily not maintaining it, it's time. Um, the time has has gotten us to this point. Yeah, and um, if you call it restoration instead of repair, because that's really what you're doing. You're trying to restore. Restore, yeah. And and I was thinking about the breakout, and and really the, the my priority, if I was to look at the two sets of stairs, would be the front set steps. I know that the south s- steps would probably be much easier to to uh, accept as far as uh, the cost um, because it is much lower, but it is only a set of stairs that it's used for emergency egress and it's not used for the community. So, oh, well, it would, it would be if there was an, ever an issue, but the front steps is what's inviting. That's the steps that everyone walks up to go to central services, to go see the clerks or to visit the town manager. Uh, it's not the south steps that we really don't see. So if if I was to push, those would be the ones that I would wanna see restored. Pat? So I, I, I'm agreeing with the distinction between restoration and maintenance. And I'm wondering if the cost of restoring the steps could be separated out from making the new base for the steps because that's that's a maintenance issue. If they're sinking, that's something that is part of maintenance. Where having the stonemasons you talk about restore the blocks and, and rebuild them is a restoration. And that might be a way to equalize the cost with the funds that the town has versus what you asked from CPA. I don't really think that the one is restoration and the other isn't. I mean, you have to rebuild the base to put those back. And that's part of restoring the overall structure. Well, yeah. it, it is, but but it's um, the restoration. I, I guess it's splitting hairs, Jan, but it just seems if, if there's a way to um, present the request for CPA funds where the town owns a piece of the maintenance yeah, I, yeah. I see what you're trying to do. I just think it's going to be tough to. Yeah, <laughs> I don't disagree. I just was wondering how you could break it out so that it would be be understood better by those who were deciding about the CPA funds. All right. Are there other questions or comments about the town hall steps? Um, I see Robin's hand. That that's a stale hand. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Jeremiah, thanks very much for coming to yeah. uh, talk about these proposals. This is a lot of a lot of work on some important town buildings. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thanks, Thank Jeremiah. You. Appreciate Good it. Good night, Jeremiah. Good night. Um, so we are now at 8.30. I think we need to close up the CPA proposals now. Um, are there, what, what is the appetite for looking at the rest? Anything else on this agenda that is um, important for this evening? Mm, just voting on the DRB okay. CPA representatives would be. Writer's block might be good just because it's good news. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's take a vote on our design review board uh, and community preservation act representatives. And um, I think that we uh, voted on me last month because I took the minutes and then um, I didn't forward them to the committee. (laughs) 
I I feel like we had voted on it two meetings ago too, because I feel like I remember <laughs> on one of the last meetings that I took minutes putting in that we had made you the CPA rep again. I well, I I'm have the same at, recollection I that you've been elected. Yeah, I, I like to I've definitely seen it in the minutes for the 19th, which I'm looking at here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Or, um, well, I, I, I remember it as an elect, was it an electronic vote? Are we allowed to vote electronically? It was a roll call vote. Oh, okay. Yeah, like we, uh, people would, I think members had chimed in over email um, okay. and then like right before the meeting and then at that, at last meeting, we just yep. made it yep. official. All um, right. Yep. So yeah, that must, be a, that must be a, yeah, that must be a holdover <laughs> from last meeting. So cross out. CPA, I guess it's really DRB. Okay, uh, we do need a uh, design review board. And am I imagining things, Jan, that you? Um, um, Paul Bachelman asked me if I would continue, but I would have to be elected by you all. And I said I would if you, if you all would. All right. Well, I would like to move that we make Jan the representative to the design review board. Yeah, a second. Second. Thank you. And um, so we'll have a roll call vote. Pat, Bob? I agree. Robin Fordham? Agree. Jan Marquardt? I recuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for myself. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we'll go to Jane Scheffler. I'm in favor. Okay. And Hetty Startup? Hello, Hetty. Where did Hetty go? She's trying She's to unmuted. Unmute. Unmute. Sorry, I muted myself. Um, I'm in favor. And uh, Jane Wald, I'm in favor too. So there we go. It's um, thank you all. Thank you, Jan. More DRB fun. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jan. And thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Robin has the welcome. <laughs> uh, a question from uh, Hilda Greenbaum about asking yeah. if she's going to talk about the North Amherst Library. Yeah, I just saw that. So um, the North Amherst Library application actually came from our DPW, I noticed. Um, Guilford Mooring had submitted the application. Um, and I, was, I didn't think Jeremiah was aware of that, of that project. Um, so that's why uh, at a subsequent meeting, we'll need to have DBW um, present that application. All right. And then, so let's, you want to go to Writer's Walk? Yeah. So um, we are very close to executing a contract with ArtFX for uh, the construction of those of the signs. Um, <laughs> woo woo. Yep. So almost time to celebrate. <laughs> um, I think there's just uh, we wanted to confirm uh, with DPW because they're they're doing the installation um, to make sure that the specs came in um, kind of like compatible with whatever footing that they're going to put in the ground, just to make sure that you know the footing will line up with the post and everything. Um, Cause I think it's, you know, I've, I don't even know how long this project has been going on. I just started here, but I have a feeling that it's been a while since DPW is probably- You weren't been... born yet, Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, basically um, Anthony is gonna uh, send out the, execute the contract, get that started. Um, within this week, just as soon as we hear back from DPW. Um, but they their bid came in um, a couple weeks ago, and then we've just been having a little bit of a correspondence with them. Um, and it should be good to go very soon. Yeah, we and just to make sure that the website <clears throat> is modified for recent changes, like the name of the Boltwood in and um, make sure the numbers on the website are the same as the numbers on the map that we have now. And we'll, to do that, we're gonna have to contact the UMass prof because we're just um, 
linking to that site. Um, and if that doesn't work, we're gonna have to figure out a way to transfer the information from that site to the town or something so that we can update it. Uh, but Hetty and I are going to walk the tour on Friday to make sure it really is the best route um, before we nail anything down. Mm -hmm. Does it sound like this can be installed uh, this season before winter? When is the ground going to freeze? <laughs> well, I, I hear from contractors that that'll be December. Great, it should be able to then, right? Ben, how long does it take them to manufacture these things? Um, I'm looking at the quote right now. I think it was delivery. It says approximately four to five weeks. Okay, so they can't start till we finalize the artwork. <clears throat> right. But during the four to five weeks, we could fix the website. So all we really need to do is make sure that that address is right. And then Friday, we can give you the thumbs up on the route to make sure we don't, have to, Seth doesn't have to change any numbers or anything. Okay. And this is Nate, I thought, I don't, um, did Seth email us? Yes, he sent us the artwork. Yeah, yeah, so we just, yeah, I think we're gonna verify that. I think Ben had noticed that West Cemetery or something had been mislabeled. We need to update just a few things on the sign panels, um, but yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. I noticed in Seth's response, he he just removed the name of the cemetery altogether, instead of. Oh, okay. Because it said Wildwood Cemetery, and then. Oh, yeah. Whoops. But he just took it out. So would we, do we want it to at least say West Cemetery? Yeah, it needs to say that. I yeah. Think. Yeah, I mean, it's also it's, you know, it's it's shown on the panel, so it's nice to call it out as a landmark. Yeah. What yeah. Is that? thing yeah yeah um and so we're just going to walk it in the order that i did the one through 12 or at least one through 10 and um if for some reason it just seems wacky that i was wrong we'll just have him really quickly switch the numbers and the order mm -hmm. it shouldn't be hard yeah but i think it works i mean it made sense to me when i organized it <laughs> right <laughs> so but that's just like our final way of, you know, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's great news. Yeah. Wonderful. Come on, Jan. Thanks well, for all your hard work on it, Jan and Nate. Everybody bring a bottle of champagne to the next meeting and we'll all <laughs> open it at the same time on screen. Well, not next time, when it's actually happening. When we, when we can walk it and see the signs, we'll end with a champagne feast. Yeah, we can break a bottle over one of the posts when they put them in. Or something. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. What fun. Um, let's see, we need to see if there Oops. is any public comment. Um, yeah, so any members of the public can feel free to raise their hand um, if they want to make a comment. Okay, so it looks like I'll allow Hilda to talk. Hilda, you can go ahead. If you I don't really to. have anything to say, but I was just upset that um, they, the, the town was applying for money. We had a, Molly Turner, Pat Holland, and I had applied for that money last year, but we really weren't in a position to go forward. And the manager really would like to go forward on, on this project with where there's work to be done on the old library. So can I guess I'll find out by watching the agendas when uh, Guilford brings it forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and exactly. It's not a lot of money, but this is a project that's being paid for privately. So if the private person can get some help, they would appreciate it. I think the next historical commission meeting will be when the, um, there's a few CPA proposals left to be discussed and they'll all be on that, that agenda, so. It'll be before the 12th, presumably, of November? Yes. Okay. And then we prioritize our list, right, and send it to CPA at that meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So when, when is our next meeting? I thought it was Wednesday of this week. Is that not right? No, today is 
Wednesday of this week. We moved it. I Can thought I we have... moved this from Wednesday of last week. And that oh. we had one at Wednesday of this week as well. Oh, that's... Can I ask you guys to keep on top of the North Amherst Library so in case it gets lost somewhere? No, we'll yeah. be looking at that application next time. So the... Um... Well, we're just, I was going to say, while we're talking about that, you know, November 11th is a holiday. Um, it's a Wednesday. The 10th is a Tuesday. The 9th is a Monday. And that's, you know, only two weeks from today. So November, I get, wow, that's, is that really true? November 2nd is two weeks from today. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's kind of scary. So, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what the commission schedule, what you'd like it to be, but, you know, there's a few things that could happen on that meeting. There's the uh, CPA proposals, there's the um, bylaw um, work, the preservation bylaw, there could be a few project updates. So, um, do you want to meet on the 9th or 10th or the previous week? And I guess that's. Oh. I think the Maybe. previous week would be safer. And I think probably most of the meeting will be CPA. Mm -hmm. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, because I, I feel like, um, I mean, I think the CPA committee is vote, actually voting on the 12th, but. I think they're they're hearing presentations according to the schedule I got. They're hearing presentations like almost every week up until then, and so I feel like the sooner that we can get them our, you know, evaluation, the the better, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just giving it to them right before the twelfth. So what is what is the I don't have it in my schedule. What is the first um, deliberating CPA committee like? Not. The end of proposals, I guess, is when we usually, if there's time, we start to deliberate. Yeah, I mean, Robin, so one thing right now is, you know, I don't know if Ben has one, but there's no calendar of the CPA committee meetings. What we've heard is that it's really accelerated this year and that the CPA committee is actually going to try to vote to recommend, you know, vote their recommendations and uh, by the end of November. So, I mean, that's, that's a really quick turnaround compared to the typical process. Yeah, I mean, I, I have, I definitely, I, I just left my desk. I have the schedule at my desk. I thought um, I, I can look it up. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's definitely, definitely trying to move quickly. What about if we meet next week so we can get our recommendations in? Can we meet at this time next week? That's fine with me. Yeah, I, I, I have the uh, local historic district meeting on next Monday. At, at 6 so, I, I actually, I, I, on my calendar, our regular meeting was supposed to be the 21st. And then we put an additional meeting on the 14th. So we backed up from all of this. And the meeting that got changed was the meeting on the 14th that got moved to tonight. And so I, I'm just, I'm looking at my calendar and that was what we decided the last meeting, I believe. But She's I could, I could, Wednesday. we should keep, if everybody still has that open. Wednesday the 21st. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I, we didn't, we didn't post the agenda and time enough for that meeting though. Mm. Oh, okay. Well then Monday the 26th, I have a conflict that so, could, could happen at 3.30 um, on the 26th. I was reserving the 21st. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Would the 27th or 28th work for people? No, no, those are committed. The 29th could work. Uh, but Hedy, you, you're not good on Thursdays, right? Yeah, Thursdays on are the, for me, but... Um, Thursdays don't work because that's when the CPA meets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what about can um, Ben? Can you come to part of it, and Nate could cover when you're not on it. When is that? Yeah. Happen? Well, the yeah historic district is that that's uh, at four, I believe. So. Oh, so you might be done by six thirty. Why get out of your chair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what what date are we talking about? Twenty six. Twenty six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nate, Nate and I could tag team both meetings somehow. We can make it work. I think Nate does that. 
Yeah, and I, I think it's <laughs> likely I could be there because what's happening on my calendar is there's an event on the 25th that the rain date is the 26th. But if the weather forecast is even remotely accurate, the 25th is supposed to be good, so I won't need the rain date. But at the very least, I would be late. Well, and it's at 6.30, not 6, so it gives you more time. Right. Robin, is that okay with you, Hattie? Yes, good Good with me. Or, works for me. Jane, right. so uh, I think we better, if, if we schedule it, we should probably keep it at 6.30 and not push it to 7. And we need to let Jane know because she's not Just, on there anymore. Yeah. Um, Okay, so 6.30 on the 26th. Yeah, Nate, Nate, does that seem doable between the two of us? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've got enough time I to think, post it. Yeah, we've got enough time to post it. And it's better than just taking make, like We'll just two. make sure the other meeting's over by 6. And then yeah. have a little break. So That's I'm good. supposed to be at that LHD meeting, too. That's great. Yeah. But you can all eat during our meeting as long as you go off camera and you don't talk with your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> someone, we were just at a meeting recently, and someone said, "Oh yeah, you can eat totally eat when you're on a Zoom meeting." And I was like, oh, "You can, huh?" <laughs> yeah, just turn off the video. <laughs> oh, I'm in meeting Zoom meetings now where people eat with the video on. But <laughs> uh, all right. Well, so that looks good for a next meeting. And um, the those applicants to be invited. Um, oh, there's one thing I wanted to say about CPA. Um, yeah, I understood. I understand that the Amherst Historical Society submitted an application, but it was declined at the staff level. So, um, so if all these other applications have been accepted at the staff level, then, um, you know, we can proceed with them. The town staff, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I don't know, seems like, to me, it seems like it should have come forward to us, but. Um, mm -hmm. Was it incomplete or just because they've had so many or something? I mean, if it's incomplete, that would make sense. No, there was the, I, the historical society submitted a proposal, um, in part, uh, most of it was for um, legal fees and work to determine, you know, if if they can have capital projects on the property, you know, so you know what what can happen with the building and the structure, and um, just to clear the title. Yeah, and staff, um, you know, uh, in accounting, they work with CPA, and they, you know, they said that it's categorically and you know just ineligible because it's not preservation and you know I'm trying to get a meeting with the different staff people in in the historical society to discuss it so you know I'm not I, um, I'm trying to I was trying to get it scheduled for later this week just so we can talk through it I think you know I think again when we were talking with um, Meg earlier this evening about the trail in North Amherst there's you know some degree of interpretation and whether it's flexibility or inflexibility with what, what that means. So, um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I almost think it could have, um, you know, could have almost gone to the CPA committee or to the commission to make the decision. Um, and, uh, you know, staff has some opinion from when the historical society submitted something similar a few years ago and they just sent an email out, the staff did later this evening and um, it, is somewhat applicable to this um, proposal, but I think there's some some areas where it doesn't um, directly apply. So, you know, it's one of those things where maybe it's by the time we meet next time, it's going to be back on the docket. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we have uh, done as much as we can do tonight. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that Hilda had her. Oh. Oh. End up still. I don't know if that's a stale hand or not, but I think it's a no, new, I think it's a new, a new hand. hand. <laughs> new hand. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 not muted. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Do you have any idea how much money there is for historical preservation, or how much money in CPAC of which you ten percent is required? Um, I think I've heard that you know that they have a, a little less than a million dollars 
um, you know, then I don't know if that's excluding debt service or not. So I think that's for everything. That's well, for everything, right? So I think there might have been a um, uh, I don't know the right term for it, a holdover of uh, historical preservation funds from the last cycle, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. You know, a rollover from one year to the next to meet our ten percent. If we give money back, didn't we turn some money back in? Do we get to hang on to it as historical or does it go back into a general pot? It goes back into the general fund, the general reserves for CPA. Mm, okay. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll so move. Second. Wonderful. All in favor? I think there's no. Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. All right. Lovely so, seeing you all. It's been a, a very full meeting. So thanks. Yeah. For everything. So till the 26th. Same time, same stage. Next week. Okay. Right. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Have a right, good week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.